Welcome to episode five of the Custom Private Equity Podcast, the long-term effects of $20 oil. I'm Ron Davis, the co-host of the podcast, where we talk about all things private equity. My co-host and the expert is Paul Anthony Thomas, the principal at customprivateequity.com. And Paul, you know oil, we talked a little about it in a previous episode, but it is getting even crazier than it was when we talked about it in that one. And now uh, oil is $20 a barrel. What are the effects of that? Well, the short-term effects of that, if, if oil stays at $25 or 25, $20 to $25 a barrel for the next 30 days, it's been there for about 15 days now, um, the companies that were holding on by their fingernails when oil was $50 are going to go bankrupt. And there's going to be, there's probably 50% 50 of the marketplace that is in danger of going bankrupt. And their oil production and all, all their equipment and everything is going to come on the market. It's going to... It's actually going to flood the market with with deals, what we call deals, where people that have production that's that's cash flowing at twenty five dollars, they have to sell it to to pay off their debts where they bought oil at fifty dollars. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of of hardship in the oil sector of North America and around the world. And um, you're saying that in thirty days. Um half the oil producers are in danger of, of, uh, of, of going out of business? Actually, they're in danger of going out of business today. Yeah, because it's been 30 days. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, because we have this, this – now, let's talk a, a, for a second why it's $20 a, a barrel. Why did, it, why did this happen? I mean, it was getting hurt before because we talked about that in our last one. But when we were talking about the oil field in the last one, we were talking about – how detrimental it would be to be like $30 or $35 a barrel. And now it's 20. So why, what's happened that's made it go even further down? So the dramatic, there's two dramatic things that have happened. Russia and, and Saudi Arabia have been arguing about the price of oil for a long time. Saudi Arabia is the second largest producer in the world. And Russia is the third largest producer in the world. They, they, they go back and forth. The U.S. is now the largest producer in the world, but just by a little not a lot. So they've been struggling over the European market because Russia wants the European market and Saudi and Saudi Arabia wants the European market as well. So they've 30 days ago, they decided, okay, we're going to, we're going to Saudi Arabia said, we're going to fix you. We're going to fix you by flooding the market with oil, with cheap oil. It's going to put you out of business. Your income's going to go away and your expenses are going to override everything that you do. Then we'll have that share of the market and that's fine. That's what they're trying to do to the North, North American shale drillers. They actually sent several million barrels of, of crude oil to North America to, to try to put the, the shale drillers out of business because they know that the shale drillers are just teetering right on the edge of bankruptcy almost all the time now mm. because it costs, it costs so much to drill horizontal wells and frack them in the U.S. that well, nine out of ten wells that they drill will never pay for themselves and never recoup the investment that they made. So mm. that's billions, literally billions of dollars over the last few years. Yeah. So we had that going on. Um, right. And then we also have now with the COVID problem, the COVID-19 issue, we have lesser demand. So demand's dropped by 30%. So in North America, we use about 20 million barrels a day of oil when the economy's good and flowing and doing well. Well, if you reduce that by 30%, how much is that? That's 7 million barrels a day that the demand's gone away. People are not driving, you know, utilities, the utilities have slowed down, uh, the office buildings, their lights are shut off, so they don't have big utility bills. Uh, it's all kinds of demand things that have happened in this marketplace that have, that have basically pounded the price some more because the refiners, right. the refiners are still refining gasoline, but they can't sell that gasoline because people aren't driving. So right. the price right. just keeps coming down and key as they get, as their storage gets full, they say, well, we've got to do something. The only thing, the only one of the primary things we can do is lower the price. And they we're at, right now we're at a dollar 25 in Texas. We're yeah, on our way to 90, yeah. 99 percent, 95 cent a gallon gasoline in the next 30 days if something doesn't happen. Um, so we had this price war going on that was pushing the price down. And then we had demand went down 30 
30%. And that was all 30 days ago. And, and people were on the edge at that point. Now you're saying 30 days from now, half the people, half those people who were on the edge are going to, are going to collapse. If the oil price of oil stays at tw below $25 a barrel, which right. the state of Texas right now is trying to do something about that, but their effect is not going to be enough to make a difference. Uh, so 30 days out um, from now, you've got 50%. What happens if it goes longer? If it goes longer than 30 days from now, which would be uh, April, May, 1st of June, starting the 1st of June, if it's still $25 a barrel the 1st of June, we're going to see um, a drastic decline in the, in the amount of oil being produced in North America. Right now, we're producing about 12 million barrels to 13 million barrels a day, something like that. Uh, that could easily go down to uh, five to eight to maybe nine million barrels a day in a 30 day period of time when operators, they can't make it, they're losing money at $25, so they can't, they can't continue to do that. They, they just can't do it anymore. Um, there are quite a few leases in the world that, that make money at $20 and, and even $10, but there are a lot more leases that don't make money at $10 and $20. So those, those uh, operators will shut down their operations. So this is the interesting thing about this dilemma is that it, it fixes itself. As operators go bankrupt or operators shut off production, then supply stops, slows down, gets smaller, and the, the price adjusts as supply gets smaller. But in the, in the world of finance, we call this slow money because it's, this doesn't happen tomorrow. If right. I cut off my, my 75 barrels a day of production that I operate, that doesn't mean anything to the market. But if 5,000 of us cut off 75 barrels a day, now we're talking about something that has some sort of effect on the market. It may be a penny at the pump, but it has some, some effect. And then if you have people like Exxon and Occidental, which just announced today that they are, they're cutting their supplies, uh, the supply of oil that they're producing, that should make a difference in the price over the next 30 days. But it, it be doubtful that it'll make another $5 a barrel difference in price. So go from 20 to, to $25 a barrel. So oil closed, West Texas Intermediate closed at 16.75 yesterday. So it's below $20 a barrel and has been for the last week which is a lot, down a lot from $50 we were getting in December, $49. So, all right, so um, what happens in 60 days? Well, as the, as the supply lessens, then the, the price is gonna start creeping up. But as I said, it takes a long time for that to happen. It doesn't happen. You know, people think that's gonna adjust, adjust itself in 30 days, but it really can't. It can adjust itself downward in 30 days like it did when people stop driving and when demand falls. But when supply starts meet, meeting up with demand, it just takes a lot longer to, for, it to, for it to adjust. So, for, so, so the stock market can fall a tremendous amount in one day, but it takes a long time to recover that. Yeah, yeah. It's like what happened in 2008. The stock, stock market fell for 40%. Well, it took it five years to get back to where it was. Yeah. But it, and it, so, fell, it fell in 30 days, but it took it five years to get back. What happens if the Saudis and um, the Russians continue to fight uh, for six months and COVID doesn't go away as quickly? What happens then? Well, then we're going to see dramatic uh, decimation of the oil and gas business. So in 1986, when the oil price went down to $10 a barrel, we lost half of our, our experience in the business. So those people that were 60, 65, 55, 65 years old, they quit. They just, they went, they were tired. They went away. They, they decided they were going to go play golf and they never came back to the industry. So in the paper I wrote recently, you know, the decline of oil and what happens and during the, during the price declines and what happens when the price declines again, I have a chart in there of the number of oil operators we lost and they went from 85 to 90. And that number went from, in, in Texas, it went from 7,500 to 3,500 oil operators. So that's what's the, the long-term effect, is people with experience, like me, I'm 63 years old, people like me that 
we can't do anything in the oil business. We have to go find something else to do and we'll, we'll leave the business forever. I know people, I see people all the time now that I used to do oil business with back in the 80s and they're real estate developers in Houston now. So the opportunities here are to, are to buy equipment that is, as these companies go bankrupt and as people leave the business, we can move in and we can buy their oil production. That's one of the major opportunities. We can buy oil production for $2, $3 in the ground that we're all selling on top of the ground at $25. So we have spread that we can, if we buy it for $2 in the ground and can produce it for $10, we can make money. There's certain pieces of equipment that you can buy that are worth a lot of money outside the oil business. Forklifts are an example. Uh, skid steers are an example. Uh, you have to be careful to buy the right equipment and you have to know what to buy and when to buy it and you have to have a place to keep it. But you're going to buy this equipment for 20 cents on the dollar, 10 cents on the dollar for a replacement cost. A skid steer that would cost you $30,000 in December of last year, you're going to try to buy that piece of equipment for three to $5,000 today. Um, and and in, the, in the next 18 months, you're going to be able to do that. But you have to have the capital to be able to go out and buy that stuff and, and hold it for a, a month or two or a year or two even. Uh, other great opportunities are uh, the real estate that they're going to vacate is going to come up on the market and you're going to be able to buy that just for what people owe against it or even less, half half of what, what people owe against it. Because in Midland, in Odessa, there's going to be a lot of bankruptcies coming up if the oil stays at $25 a barrel for another 60 days, there are going to be a lot of bankruptcies. There are going to be equipment bankruptcies. There's going to be oil operator bankruptcies. What, what are the opportunities if it clears up in 30 days? If demand comes back and the Saudis and the Russians stop fighting? Well, if the price goes back to $50, then the opportunities are to, to buy the assets of the people that were hanging on by their fingernails. So mm -hmm. that's 50% of the marketplace. The other 50% of the marketplace will be fine and make it and, and they own their assets for cash and everybody is going to be okay. But there's still a, a large percentage of the marketplace that's not going to make it through this 25, this 30 days of $25 yeah. oil. So there's a tremendous opportunity here to go out and, and make some investments where you can double your money pretty quickly. And if you do it right, you can make three or four or five times your money in a, in a relatively short period of time and in the private equity world a short period of time is two to five years. Okay. So those are the kind of opportunities we're looking at today. All right.